Hello friends, hello friends. Welcome back to Haven Hill. I'm inviting you into my kitchen today. I'm trying to get my lighting decent here. I have, we have the sun is out today. It has not been out for a while and if you actually it was out yesterday but that was the first time in a very long time um anyway i'm inviting you into my kitchen today it is winter time here obviously i wear hats almost every single day um if you're wondering if i don't ever wear a hat not this time of year i but it's cold we're in and out all the time with animals and kids and all the all the things that we do around here so um once you put a hat on like you know, it just kind of ruins your hair, so I just leave it on. Don't always have it on, on if we're going somewhere, but <laughs> sometimes I do. So anyway, winter time, I'm inviting you into my kitchen because today I'm going to share with you something that I do often in the winter time, especially when we need groceries. We are in dire need of groceries. Again, uh, Jace is headed on his way home from work to get groceries, bless his heart. He is my grocery man. We actually really need to go um, back to Amish country, to, th to their community to buy bulk food again. We just haven't had the time. We were supposed to go last week, that didn't happen. We were gonna go this weekend. I will now be gone this weekend. So um, it'll probably be the following weekend. So he's just gonna go to Sam's Club, get what we know that we can get there. Um, if you don't know this, we have a really big family. We have eight kids and we live on about 10 and a half acres of land that we are trying to restore. That is why we finally call our home Haven Hill because we are trying to bring it back to a haven. So join me in my kitchen today. So what I'm going to do is uh, make something that I call pantry soup. It has many different flavors, many different faces. It is what I have. I'm always cooking with what I have so I can be a good steward of not only our money, but also our food. I don't like wasting food. I also don't like wasting money. Jason might disagree sometimes when all the seeds start rolling in. Like, is this absolutely necessary? But it is. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I know if I have um, water or broth, today I'm just using, using water because all my broth is frozen. Um, I'm just using water today. I know if I have water, onions, garlic, sea salt, and my herbs, I grow tons of herbs. I do for culinary and medicinal purposes. I know if I have those things, I can pull together a soup. So, I haven't even pulled everything out yet. I don't even know exactly the, direct, the direction I'm going. I just know that we need groceries and this is our option tonight. So, I thought I would take you with me and show you a way that our family um, saves money, especially being a large family. Someday I'll share with you our grocery budget. Um, and some of you have asked for that. So. I'm just curious, I'm sure curious about how much we actually spend on food. Um, but not today. Today I'm just gonna sh share with you, this is one way that our family does save quite a bit of money, is when I can pull together delicious soups. Now, let me tell you this. I do not think that if you are eating good, wholesome, del good, wholesome, healthy food that you should ever compromise on taste. In fact, I'm of the mindset that when you do that and you know how to cook well and what ingredients go well together and when you have herbs and good salt, um, your food should taste amazing. I love food. I love food a lot and uh, so does my family. So come along as I show you how we do that. Now, this soup does have a meat in it. Let me show you. And this is why I decided to not follow any of my broth. I'm not gonna move my camera right now. This is a turkey. It is a smoked turkey. It is not from ours, even though I cannot wait till we can raise and harvest our own turkeys. This turkey is an organic, no antibiotics, no hormones, all of that. You like a good turkey that has already been smoked and I buy it frozen. They are absolutely delicious. We enjoy them. This, um, it's. I'm just gonna put it in the oven now. So it is about quarter to two. I'm gonna put it in the oven for a few hours at 300. And then when I'm ready to start pulling the soup together, I'll take, the, take it out, take the meat off that we need in the soup and take all of the juice that comes out of it and pour it into the soup as well. When I don't want to thaw out or if I do not have broth, that is my hack. If you are baking off some form of, form of meat that um, will release juice, it's a fantastic way to get that really good flavoring in your soup. Okay, so that is in the oven. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my onions, get my garlic ready to go, get it simmering, and um, see what else I have. Now, long ago I used to be a vegetarian and I did not eat 
uh, meat, not for any other reason other than I just didn't really like meat. That has changed. I'm not a vegetarian anymore. And since I had this turkey, I'm putting it in particularly for my boys. If it were just Jason and I, uh, he of course enjoys meat as well, but he, we're both of the mindset that if we have it, great, but if we don't, it's okay. There's lots of things that you can do. Um, since I have it, I'm gonna do that. I will probably put rice in here. Our family loves rice. Um, so I'll probably put rice in there. I'm gonna see what other vegetables I have. I think, I know I have um, some peppers. I'm hoping I have some carrots still. Um, I know I have celery in the freezer. I grew that all this past summer. You guys, if you've never grown celery, grow celery. Not only is it entirely easy to grow, um, it has fantastic flavor, including the leaves, and you can just um, chop it up, pop it in your freezer, and have it ready to go if you don't enjoy it um, fresh. We do, but either way, put it in your freezer, freeze it with doing nothing to it. You don't have to can it, you don't have to blanch it, you have to do anything and then throw it in your soups. It's fantastic. A really quick thing that you can do in the kitchen. So I know I have that. I have okra. Our family loves okra, but we don't usually like it in soup because I forget what the slimy part of okra is called. I used to know. Um, snot. <laughs> I'm not sure if you just heard Riggins. He goes, snot. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, um, it releases that in the soup. I've done it, I think once or twice and we were, all of us kind of agreed like, nah, so I'm not going to put the okra in there. I know I have tomatoes, but we just had tomato soup last night. So if I need tomatoes, I might just throw a couple ladles in there of the soup from our soup from last night. Cause it was absolutely delicious. Last night we had tomato soup and grilled cheese. So good, you guys. Okay, let me walk you through what I just grabbed out of my freezer and refrigerator. I'm not kidding when I said I had, I really had no plan. I just knew, like I wanted it to be very real. I knew um, this is what we had to do tonight. So I have a bag of frozen green onions. Green onions are much like celery. Um, they're so simple to harvest. They grow prolifically and you can chop and freeze. Um, so I'm gonna do regular onion. I have more than this, but I, I might do more green onions tonight. So I'm gonna do a cho uh, chop up onion. I have my green onions. I'll just put probably about a cup in there. My celery, I'm going to chop up really small, um, some carrots. Uh, my husband does not love um, big cooked carrots. So for Jason, I will cut these up very small. Here is my avocado oil. Uh, Sam's Club started carrying this. I love this. It's a fantastic, I'm sorry, avocado oil. Oh, almost forgot garlic. I'll put at least, um, this is garlic from our garden. I'll put at least three or four cloves in there, if not all of it. Actually, I'll probably just do all of it. Um, salt, pepper, uh, lime. My limes need to be used up. See, they're turning yellow. Lime is my secret ingredient to every delicious soup. Put lime in your soup, it'll change your world. I went down to my greenhouse sunroom to grab my parsley. Look at that. So I don't know the order that I'm gonna release these. It's probably the last video I just um, posted before this one, or it might be the next one. I was giving you, um, or I was showing you how I overwinter and to continue to grow herbs in Garden Zone 5B through the winter. So um, these are fresh, this is fresh parsley from my garden. If you wanna know how I grow it, go back to that video. And then this is, I grew. Okay, now you can see my face, <laughs> not just my hands and the food. Uh, this year I grew tons of um, red peppers, chili peppers, serrano peppers, um, Jalapenos. Oh, jalapenos, yep, thank you, Riggs. I grew at least four different peppers. I dried all of them to make our own uh, chili pepper type of uh, flakes. First of all, again, another really simple thing, peppers. Those type of peppers grow very well in our area. Not all my green peppers did fantastic at all this year. I think I grew like two or three that were worthy of eating. <laughs> um, anyway, I dehydrated all of them, which actually took about a day and a half in my dehydrator. I would love a freeze dryer someday. And then I just crushed all of them and made our own chili pepper. I thought this would get us like, you know, I don't know, 
maybe to summertime. You guys, in one large pot of soup, so I'll show you my stock pot that I'm getting ready to make it in, I will use probably a half a teaspoon. It's so strong, but so flavorful and delicious. So this is what I managed to pull together. Now, like I said, I'm gonna do chop up my onions, um, get my garlic going in the avocado oil, wait for my meat, and then I'll show you how I throw it all together at the end with the rice and all of my herbs and seasonings and everything else. And I will honestly report back to you what I think of it and what my kids think of it this time. Because while I do this enough that you know, the flavoring is similar, each time is different according to just what we have on hand. Okay, I have my, this is just uh, the pot of like potpourri over here. It smells amazing, all fresh deliciousness in another video as well. All right, my avocado oil is in there. I'm gonna add my onions. Into my avocado oil, I'm going to add all of those onions, all of my minced garlic. I did, when all is said and done, about one full onion. Um, and probably about eight to 10 cloves of garlic. In 100% honesty, I feel a head cold coming on, so I figure since my base is gonna be water instead of a broth, I'm gonna add all the garlic I can. Oh, it already smells amazing. I will often do this in the afternoon and then just let it simmer for hours so all of those flavors meld. So good. And then once my onions are nice and translucent, I will just add a bunch of the water. I'll let it just start simmering. I will add um, my salt, my pepper, my red pepper flakes. I will add, um, what else do I have back there? I'll go ahead and probably chop up my carrots. I'll add my green onions and celery. Let all of that just go, probably for a couple of hours while we're waiting on the turkey and just for time. Adding in those carrots. Oop. Spilling carrots. <sighs> Adding in the celery. Like I said earlier, I cut, I chop up since I know how I grow my celery. It's all organic. It's not sprayed. I cut up all of my leaves. I love celery leaves. They're actually really, like they give such good flavor without adding that texture of celery. And because I freeze my green onions, I'm gonna go ahead and add in those now for the water because they're not fresh. They're not going to be, I mean, they're going to taste, like if I were to eat them now, they would turn, I mean, it would turn to mush. So I want them to cook down even more and be delicious. Man, that just looks beautiful with all that color. My parsley will go in last. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my water. Oh, this is probably, you guys, I don't even measure the water. I bet this is at least four to six cups. Well, probably even more than that. It might even be closer to eight cups of water. I'm just so used to cooking in these big pots. I'll try to get the specifics and write it down for you and put it in there. So now, I'm gonna go ahead, turn the heat up, bring this to a boil, and then just let it simmer for onion skin, and then just let it simmer for a very long time. Oh, then I'll add my salt. Let me add my salt. I will add a good, probably two tablespoons of salt, and my guess is I will even add more later. Uh, just depends on how that turkey comes in, how much juice is there, and everything. Like I said, it's a smoked turkey, so I'm not gonna add more than that now. I will absolutely add more liquid as well. Um, probably after I see, well, no, I'm gonna go ahead and add it now. Okay, I measured this time. The first round, um, I, did, I filled it to the same spot in the bowl. The first round, sorry, bad camera shot there, was eight cups and here is another eight cups. I know that this will cook and reduce down salt. 
Um, I know that this will cook and reduce down now for quite a while, like I said, for hours. I will add the turkey juice, as well as the meat, the rice, and all the other things um, later. But as this reduces down, it's gonna become so flavorful with all of those vegetables in there. If you're a vegetarian, you could literally add more vegetables, skip out on the meat, um, and add whatever you want for your protein or your carb. Um, if you wanted to add rice, if you wanted to add noodles, if you wanted to add beans. Um, I don't have any beans right now, otherwise I probably would throw some beans in here as well. Uh, yeah, it, the, the options are absolutely endless. If you have not figured this out yet, I cook a lot by feeling, a lot by smell, by taste, by sight. I want my food to be colorful, and I do that very intentionally. But I do think it has come out of learning how to cook well. I cook, I used to cook a lot following recipes. I don't very much anymore, but I know just from working in my parents' restaurant and for just truly enjoying food, I know a lot of flavors that taste well together and I'm always learning, like I never stop. I'm always reading cookbooks or reading different ideas. Um, you know, it's just, it's not as complicated as what you think. Look at that little guy, he just woke up. Hi, buddy. Hi, did you wanna say hi? No. Okay, we'll just give this little guy a minute. When you know flavors that just work really well together, there comes a freedom. And when you're constantly learning and reading and just doing different things, it just comes, it gives you a freedom that, hey, that I think that that will work. So anyway, like I said, I will not add my parsley and my lime juice till much later. I will do one full lime for sure for this size pot. If it were just me, I would probably do two limes. I just genuinely love the flavor of limes. Um, I also might go grab a bit more parsley, or I might go grab, um, I have lemon thyme that has also, has overwintered very, very well down there, so I might grab some of that as well. You know, the other thing too, I'm just thinking out loud here, it, you could always add a really delicious um, balsamic vinegar. Oh, okay. Yeah. A little bit of a balsamic vinegar. Um, I would not probably do a regular vinegar in here. Okay. Would you like to go with him? No. Um, you could add a little bit of a really delicious white wine to it um, as it cooks down. You could add curry. You could start to go a little bit of a curry um, direction with it if you have that. I don't have that. Can I encourage you with one other thing too? It, I forgot to put my pepper in. If I waited for the perfect moment to do these videos, they would never happen. I don't have a perfectly stocked kitchen. Um, it's not a test kitchen. I don't have people that clean up for me. I do that. Uh, sometimes my kids help, sometimes they don't. Sometimes we are running around like chickens with our heads cut off. I mean, I do these because it's something that I'm passionate about because I, I hope it encourages you just to do the thing. Like don't wait for the perfect moment. It hardly ever exists. Uh, it never, never exists for me, not in this season. It is a very real fact that we have eight children. So even if I waited till my kitchen was perfectly clean, I mean, we have snack and school over there, food scraps here from cutting up. Like, but behind me, my, my sink um, is full right now of dirty dishes because we've been in the kitchen. Like, I hope that that makes you feel like doing things like this are super attainable because uh, we don't have it all together. And I would rather do these videos and hopefully you feel encouraged than to wait for the perfect moment, which for me, probably won't happen for many, many years because our family is large. So, wherever you're at, whatever season you're in, just do the thing and see what happens. And you might just end up loving it. You know, a lot of people say that it's all about the journey. It is, it's about the journey. And that middle where things feel complicated, I kinda like that. I like seeing people that are just doing the thing. So, hopefully you feel encouraged. Okay, I'm just quickly trying it just to see where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It's got a kick. I would go down to a half, for my family, I would go down to a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. For Jason and I, I would leave it exactly how it is. So 
as it continues to cook down I'll add a little bit more water I'll add that turkey juice and then it will okay, hey guys this broth has been going for a little over an hour and I wanted yeah. to show you essentially what you are making right now with this soup base before you add any sort of meat to it is a vegetable broth so you can see already how much the color has changed there is only water is a liquid right now and it tastes absolutely amazing so this will go probably a whole nother hour before i do anything else to it i had to move to a different room because my boys are um playing a game right now but anyway the other thing i wanted to just quickly tell you about that soup is that already it's probably reduced by a third so i brought it to a boil like i said i was going to do now it's been simmering for the rest of the time and i will have to definitely add some more water to it um, but it has already reduced probably like i said at least by a third just in case you're looking for like markers Can you put those away for Nanny? Mm -hmm. Vegan. Okay, we're back at it, friends. So it's obviously much later in the day. It is now about just 10 after four. So the soup has been going for a little over two hours. I just grabbed the turkey out of the oven. It's perfect, it tastes delicious. So now I'm gonna take all of the juice before I even cut the turkey put that in the soup. Oh, this um, reduced down even more. So I have actually added, in addition to the original 16 cups of water, eight more cups. That sounds like a lot, but when you're dealing with a big pot, it's really, it's really not as it reduces down and because it's cooking so long. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the juice from the turkey and pour it into my soup. And I forgot to mention the turkey has actually been resting for about 10 or 20 minutes. That's really important too. So the more of the juice comes into it and then you pour it right into your big pot. Okay, so I'm gonna try it. So now there's probably at least a cup, if not two of turkey juice and I'm sure there will be more that's gonna go in there. Oh, so good. I do. I know my kids are gonna say it's slightly spicy, so next time I will not put quite as much of the red pepper flakes in. So before I cut the turkey meat and just shred it up and um, put it in there, I'm going to cook my rice, whichever kind of rice you like, you can do this. I'm gonna cook it right in the soup. So I'll get it kind of boiling, my soup boiling again. Um, I'll probably put in about a cup of rice in here. I don't want too much because I know it's going to just continue to absorb and then I'll add my turkey when that's all done as well as my lime juice and my parsley once at the very, very end, probably about 20 to 30 minutes before we're getting ready to um, eat it. I will add those two things in here. I just opened up my spice cupboard and realized I have a bunch of turmeric. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon. Actually, I'll probably add two of turmeric to it as well. And Riggins just went to go grab me our rice that I keep in our um, outside pantry. So I'm just going to add a cup of rice to this. Like I said, you use whatever rice that you have. Honestly, this might even just be a simple white rice. Jasmine is our favorite. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> Isn't that, that's, that's, yeah, that's just how it is. So I added a cup of rice. You can always add more. I'll go ahead now, get it boiling, put my lid on as soon as it starts boiling. Actually, I'm only gonna put my lid on partially. As soon as it starts boiling, I'll turn it back down to low and let it go. In the meantime, I'm gonna start just, I'm starting to shred up this chicken just with um, some forks, two different forks or whatever, and pop it in there. Okay, here is all the turkey that I'm going to put in the soup as soon as that rice is done. 
You guys, it's really, really delicious. If you've never smoked a turkey, it's so good. Okay, so I just added the limes. Now I'm going to add in the parsley. After the parsley, you know what, I need to wait just a minute. The rice is almost done. Here's the biggest thing to, that you need to know when you're doing rice, cooking rice actually in a soup, is you want to make sure that it truly gets done and that it's not sticking to the bottom because then it gets slightly crunchy. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the turkey. Okay, so that is pretty much everything. I'm going to serve it with a little bit of applesauce tonight. I have applesauce that I thought out. Um, we have grapes. I made some um, crackers from sourdough discard and they are almost gone. So I'm not sure there will be any of that left, but I think it is perfect. I just thought of one more thing, but right before I serve anything, but particularly soup, I always um, taste it to make sure all of my seasonings and my spices are good to go. So I just tasted um, the soup and I definitely needed a, just a touch more salt. Um, if it were just me, again, I would add more lime, but I'm not going to because um, I, while all of my kids like the lime, they don't love it super strong. So anyway, from here on out, right before you serve all the seasonings, all of the herbs, all of the spices, all of everything is to taste and what you enjoy. Okay friends, time for us to go eat by candlelight because that's what we love. Okay friends, time for us to go eat uh, by candlelight, candlelight like we love as my boys are wrestling back there. Uh, thanks for joining me today. I hope that um, you're inspired to maybe do your, your own version of a pantry soup. If you do, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Did you do anything different? Did you do anything the same? Let me know. I would just, I would love to hear that. So anyway, until next time, have a wonderful day and we'll see you later.